I'm going to show you how to set up for a simple distillation. Okay, so you need a lot of equipment to set up for a simple distillation. So a few things that you need is a rheostat, which is also called a variac. Okay, and this is going to have two wires. Okay, for it, one that actually goes to uh, the plug, and the other one that connects to what we call a heating mantle. A heating mantle comes in different sizes. So depending on what kind of a round bottom flask you're using, you choose the right size. So for example, if I'm using this one, which is a 250 milliliter round bottom flask, this is going to be a lot better than using this one to allow for better heating. Okay, so I'm gonna use this one or I could also use um, this heating mantle, okay, which will fit very nicely in the round bottom flask. So you get the right size of uh, the heating mantle. And once you have that, you will also need a lab jack. You will need two stands, two clamp stands, along with two clamp stands. You can use more clamps if you need to, uh, but two clamp stands are at least that what you need. Okay, and at least you will need two clamps there. Uh, regarding the other glassware that you need, in addition to uh, the round bottom flask, is you will need a condenser. Okay, this is what we call a condenser. And uh, these joints, by the way, the ones that we are using here for, uh, for simple distillation, these are what we call the ground glass joints, okay? So everything will fit into each other, okay? That's the important part. And make sure things don't get stuck, okay? If they're getting stuck, then you need to grease it just a little bit, and you will have grease in the lab. So you just grease slightly on it, and then just twist it around to make sure everything is nice and smooth. Don't use too much of it, otherwise it will get into your reaction system. So this is a condenser that you need. You will also need a vacuum adapter, okay, which looks like this. And then you will also need a three-way connector, okay, that is uh, like this. You will also need a thermometer. And this is a thermometer adapter, and then this is a little connector, okay, that goes on the thermometer adapter, so it should be all together. This is where your thermometer is going to go, all right? And so we're going to push the thermometer through like this. And I will do the thermometer, or I will actually place the thermometer at the end, because I'm always afraid that the thermometer will roll off and it will break, okay? So I use that at the end, not in the beginning. <clears throat> and then you will need a receiver flask, which could be a beaker, it could be an Erlenmeyer flask, it could be a round bottom flask, it doesn't matter. And then you will also need some hoses, okay? And these tubes, these water tubes, again, these are going to be the thin wall tube. You don't need the thick wall tube. If you to use the thick wall tube, then you're system is going to be imbalanced a little bit. So you want to use a thin wall tube to, in order to uh, have poor water hoses, okay? And the last thing that you will need, not the last, second to the last thing that you will need is some boiling chips. And the boiling chips can be of two kinds. You can have marble kinds or you can have Teflons, okay? And so this one is Teflon. For any kind of distillation, you may just need one or two boiling chips, okay? So that's what you will need. And you will need a couple of keg clamps, okay? So that's what you will need to set up this whole distillation um, system, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how to actually set everything together for the simple distillation. So here is my stand, here is the clamp, and then here is uh, the lab jack, okay? And this is, of course, the uh, heating mantle. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your lab jack is a little bit higher because later on when you need to shut the distillation off, all you have to do then is to stop the heating of the round bottom flask, you can just lower the heating mantle using the lab jack, okay? And so uh, it's, it's always a good idea to start with a little bit higher lab jack here. So set up your round bottom flask. One of your clamps should be right here on the neck of the uh, round bottom flask. And this is also a good time to go ahead and put the boiling chips. So once you have the liquid in there, whatever you need to, it's a good time to put two or three boiling chips in there. So you don't forget, always have those before. And then this is where the three-way uh, clamp goes. And then what you do first, okay, is make sure that your tubes are the right size, okay? You will have to have the tubes going into the water outlet, okay? From there, so the water will be coming in, going through the condenser, and then going out also. So you wanna make sure that your tubes are long enough for it to go into the water and then up to your apparatus, okay? So make sure that you use the right kind of, or the right size of the tubes, okay? So here I have three different sizes of tubes, so I'm not gonna use the short one because if I use the short one, I may fall short, okay, a little bit. So here are my tubes that I'm going to use. And before clamping the 
condenser, I will go ahead and put the tubes on because later on it will be a little harder for me to do. So right now I'll just go ahead and put the two tubes on and then I will go ahead and move this closer and set up my um, condenser. And clamp the condenser this way because this is how it's going to fit. Remember, these are ground glass joints, so they will fit perfectly over here. All right, and so you need to make sure that your clamp also comes down here. So maybe your partner can help you or you can do it yourself, but this is how you will set this up. And then make sure that it has some support, okay, so it doesn't fall. The other thing that you need to do at this point is set the cat clamp right here. So this joint is uh, connected. Now in the kick clamp you will see that there are two C's on this. There is a larger C and there is a smaller C. Okay, The smaller C goes on the smaller part and the larger C goes on the large part. Okay, So don't put it on the opposite side. Make sure it, it goes right here. If your kick clamp is broken from any point then it's useless. Okay, So at that point get another kick clamp but this is how you would clamp this up. Okay, And this one doesn't need to be tight but it does need to have a support, okay, in there. Then what you will need to do is <clears throat> get your vacuum adapter and place that on this side. This is where you will collect uh, your liquids, okay? So again, use a keck clamp. The small C goes on the small side right here, and we are all clamped, okay? So this is your secure distillation apparatus, okay? We're not quite done yet. We still have a little bit more work to do. So now what I'm going to do is uh, put my hoses into the water. Now you can see from um, <clears throat> the side here that this is a little bit tilted and that is fine. Okay, that is how it's supposed to be. This one should be all straight okay, and parallel to the, the stand. But your condenser is going to be slightly below because, or slightly at an angle because the water actually will be coming through here and as it comes up here to the condenser, it's going to cool the condenser and cool the vapors that are distilling so you can condense the vapors, all right? So if it's a little bit at an angle, that's okay and it should be at an angle. The water hose that is at the bottom over here is going to go into your tap. <clears throat> so that's where this is gonna go. And the other water hose is going to go into the sink because that's where the water is coming out from. Okay, so make sure it's nice and secure. And then um, you can go ahead and open the tap, which I will in a minute. Okay, but then here is your flask where you'll be collecting. Now, if you see something like this, then you should turn your stand around, okay? Because that's the easiest thing to do in order to manipulate to get a good, um, good place. Okay, for your collecting flask. In some cases, you can also use a round bottom flask right here and collect it, okay? But in most cases, you'll be using a receiver like this. And in case you need to elevate it, then you can get another lap jack or you can get some cork rings and elevate that. So now this is pretty much set, okay? So I'm gonna turn on the water now and you can see that it will be going from here. It's always a good idea to turn on the water a little bit slowly, okay? Because if you do it too fast, then the pressure will actually make the tubes dance around a little bit and you'll spill water all over. So it's much better to go a little bit lower, pressure not too high. Okay, and then here you can see the water coming in and it's best to check on the tube here how much water is coming out. You don't need a lot of water coming out. You just need a gentle flow of water. So even something lower than this would be fine but this is okay for now. I will leave it like this. One other thing that happens, okay, if you look over here, the condenser right now is not completely full of water, okay? So at this time, what you may need to do is you may need to actually remove this and twist, okay, your condenser in such a way that your condenser actually fills up with water, okay? Make sure you don't twist it that much that there is a kink in here so that no water gets out, but there should be a good flow of water and there should be no kinks in the tube either. Okay, and so you may need to do that. And once that's all set, you put this one back on and that's all set. The last thing I'm going to do then is of course put my thermometer in here. So here goes the thermometer. I was telling you about how to set up the thermometer as to how low it should be or how deeper it should be. 
and your thermometer bulb should be right here okay because this is where the vapors are going to come out and they will start condensing here so these are the purest form of vapor and that's the temperature you want okay for the boiling point or distillation so that's how you would set it up and then of course face the thermometer to yourself so you can actually see what's going on okay once you're all set this is your setup the last thing you have to do is of course make sure all the connections are there so now I will take the heating mantle and I will connect it to my rheostat. The rheostat will actually control the heating rate of the, um, of the heating mantle. So right here, I've connected this and I'm going to go ahead and plug in my rheostat. Okay, and once this is all set, I will turn that on. That should uh, have the light on. And then usually you turn it on a little bit high to get the heating started. So you start at 60 or 70 in order to get the boiling started and then you can lower it down depending on what you're doing. If you're doing simple distillation, sometimes you can have it higher also. But for fractional distillation, uh, you may need to lower it down a little bit. But anyhow, this is the heating rate and that's how you control it. So make sure the distillation is going like in a small drip, one drip per second. That's how it should be, which means that's how much you're collecting here. And you will see the boiling going on here also once it starts heating up, okay? And so this boiling should not be vigorous, okay? It should be a nice gentle boil for uh, simple distillations. If your heating mantle is not heating up within first five minutes, you need to check either the heating mantle or you need to check the rheostat to make sure that, you know, both of them are working, right? Once this is set, this is all you have to do for simple distillation. So turn everything off when you're done and uh, lower the heating mantle this will make sure that your uh, liquid is still not boiling, okay? After you're done with distillation, let it cool off and then you can dismantle everything, okay, in there.